uh, the April 20th special hearing continuation. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, please watch over our township, our residents, our businesses, our administration, our public works. Please watch over our first responders, our fire department, and our sheriff. And please watch over the men and women around the world protecting us every night and every day with the U.S. military. Amen. 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 Roll call, please. Mr. Beck. Here. Ms. Lease. Here. Mr. Bryant. Here. I move approval of the agenda. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, this is a continuation of a public hearing that was initiated last Tuesday, April 11th. Um, we had, uh, by my count, 35 speakers that evening um, uh, looking at a uh, rezoning um, option that being discussed. Uh, we had uh, comments from both sides. And at the end of that public hearing on the 11th, we asked both sides to get together uh, over the course of the next week and try to come to an agreement. Um, and that's what we're here to continue that process. So we're kind of picking up from that point and moving ahead. Did you have something? I just wanted the oh. people talking. Can, yeah. can you go tell the people talking? Do you mind pulling those? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Welcome. Uh, so uh, with that um, brief introduction, uh, I would like to start if the applicant has any new information to present. And just please come to the podium, state your name, address. My name is Brian Dahl with Cincinnati United Contractors, 7143 East Kemper Road, representing the Silver Spring House. I just wanted to, uh, well, you know, just kind of reiterate, we believe we've come to an agreement with the neighbors immediately, immediately adjacent to the Silver Spring House property, and I'd like to outline some of the changes since the last meeting, and that's all I'm going to do right now. So the uh, fence along the northern buffer and eastern have changed from six foot to eight foot. Height. Right. Height and height, yes. Six foot See. to eight foot height. It's so you have a fence. mound and then a fence. Yes. Okay. There is a mound. Yeah. The, there's a, this fence right here in the northern is on a, is on a, a mound right here. Okay. And I'll show you that in, in the sections as well. Um, a total of 16 spaces have been removed from the site. So the 12 parallel parking spaces that were here are now gone. And then we, we took out four interior spaces to shift this line over about nine feet. So now that leaves us a buffer of 33 foot six on the northern and 69 foot one on the eastern. Okay. A couple of the sections have been added to this plan and kind of show you the way the grade looks in relationship of the height of the fence to the parking lot. Yeah, section cut one and two. So if you look at section cut two, which is looking through uh, this area right here on the eastern side to the detention. So you can see the property line is right here. So from the, the, the at the property line, the grade height from the top of the fence would be about nine foot 10. And then from the top of the parking to the fence would be about eight foot six. Um. What do you mean by from the grade height to the top of the fence? So from the perspective of the neighbors. Okay. So if you're standing at the neighbor's property line. Okay. Looking towards the fence. Okay. You would basically see that 
fence be nine foot ten fault tall from your perspective? Okay. Good. Thank you. And then the other section cut, section one, is along the northern, which is right here. Again, you can see at the property line of the neighbors from their perspective. The fence is 11 foot 4 tall from their perspective. And it's about 11 foot 1 tall from the top of the parking. And okay. this uh, okay. fence is on top of the, of the height of the berm okay. to get the most uh, screen capability. Question? Sure. Is there two fences? There is one continuous on, on fence the, that, the runs, side. that runs along the parking lot. Okay. Now, there may be existing fences here from the neighbors. There are some. Okay. But we're not proposing any new fences along okay. that area. That just along the parking lot. And it's in the red. It's in yeah, the it's red. red. See that red dotted line? Yeah. <clears throat> That's the fence he's referring to. Yes. And that's the fence that Silver Spring House is putting in, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. And then something else we've changed is since we've moved the parking back more towards the west, we have been able to grade that out and eliminate most of the retaining wall. There's a block retainer wall that was here last time. The only place we have it is right down at the bottom here, just to, tra to transition that transition uh, of the existing to new detention right here. And th there's a water problem there, so this still will take care of that water problem. Absolutely, okay. yes. And we may be stuck in traffic, but I was supposed to have a civil engineer here to respond to any uh, stormwater questions that you have. Where w I'm sorry, where was the water problem? No, all along. That whole problem. On the north? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That whole and line. Again, just to reiterate, we are collecting every amount of water that is on our state site, draining it to the detention, and then going out to East Kemper. But you're also solving some of the existing problem was there on, other, on this other property, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, And then regarding the landscaping, keep on that actually. Um, we've added the, the same amount of trees have remained on the northern buffer, but on the eastern buffer, we've increased the trees. Uh, we got a little more flat area uh, near this since we squeezed up the detention a little bit with the parking lot moving. So what we, type of trees are they? I'm sorry. Say it again. What type of trees? So they're a mix of arborvitaes, uh -huh. green giant arborvitaes, okay. and a few deciduous trees. Okay. Okay. Provide screening. And just to give you the updated statistics on those, so the northern buffer yard is about 34% more than what's required, as opposed to 0% in the last one. Uh, the northern buffer yard has stayed consistent with 400% more than what's required for trees. The northern buffer yard has stayed consistent with 100% more than what's required of shrubs. The eastern buffer yard has increased 176% um, from what is required. So it went from 60 and a half to about 69. The amount of trees has increased from 200% to 400% along the eastern buffer yard. The interior vehicular la landscape use landscaping um, has upped from 68% above to 86% above. The interior trees has upped from 8.3% to 9.09% above. And then the shrubs have gone slightly down, but 112% above required. Um, and then, as far as the photometric is concerned, we have eliminated three of the pole lights and the photometric that were along the northern property line. 
that used to be right here, those pull lights are gone now. And again, we still maintain a zero foot candle level around the entire property line. Um, are there any questions for me on what I presented for the changes? Um, the fence on the eastern wall next to, next to the parking area, is, is that nine feet, 11 feet? What is it? It's an eight foot tall fence. Okay. And I would, when I was saying about the different heights, it was based upon the perspective of where you're standing. Right. So if you stand at a lower grade, it'll look taller to you. Correct. And that's what I was talking about. Well, I was, I was just asking what the height of the fence yeah, itself is. Yeah, the height was. of the fence is eight foot. Okay. Yeah. It depends what it's done. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, would you like to come up? Um, I think there are two uh, things to note. First of all, Mr. Burke can speak to it, but I believe the, the residents that he represents have agreed uh, to this. There was some back and forth, but we reached that. And then there's the, still the question of getting final approval from uh, the county on this, and I think the engineering components of that just need to be approved per normal. Okay, great. So that's it. We appreciate the residents' cooperation. If I'm correct about that, Mr. Burke can speak to that. Okay. Anyone else from the applicant side? Okay. Mr. Burke, on the, on the neighbor's side. Just briefly, and I know your legal counsel and I have had a conversation about this before the meeting started. The one request we would make is to incorporate, at least by reference, the joint statement that we have presented to you as a part of your resolution mm -hmm. to the extent permitted by law. And one of the, I mean, you all asked us to be creative, and I think between the parties we were, one of the discussions that remains live and I think valuable to everybody is particularly the issue around landscaping. For instance, <coughs> the property closest to Snyder Road has some beautiful landscaping that was planted by the property owners on this property with the permission of the last resident of the property. It's still very healthy. It contains some arborvitaes <coughs> and some other trees. There's an agreement in place to continue to work with one another to see if some of what's there can't simply be left where it okay. is to the benefit of everybody. That would modify, not in a major way, <coughs> these plans, but it would create some modification to them. Yeah. There is also some hope that maybe because the buffer has been increased, it may be possible to save a mature tree or two that is one of the healthy trees left on the site. And nobody has <coughs> determined for certain that can be done, but neither has that been ruled out as a possibility. That still remains alive. So the point is that there could be some changes agreed to between the immediate neighbors and Silver Springs and their people that would result in some modifications to the landscaping plan. Um, we'd like it to be recognized that that's an effort to make this work for everybody as much as possible. That's why I think there is a benefit of at least recognizing the uh, joint statement as a part of it. I know everybody was rushing around the last two days trying to make sure everybody saw everything. I think in the end it appears to have worked. Um, To be truthful, my clients would still rather see this remain as it is today. These folks, I'm sure, would still rather have all 125 parking spaces that they originally asked for. This is a product of some compromise and some working together. And the fact that we got to this result, honestly, is in part a tribute to the three of you who put that burden on all of us when we were last here. And it worked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
anyone else? Sorry, I'm <laughs> throw my pen at you. Um, if I may, a quick question um, for the law director. Based on Mr. Burke's statement, is there any reason why we can't incorporate the the bullet point um, as a reference, or I'm not sure how we right um, uh, right and, and, and mr. Burke and I did speak about that uh, prior to the meeting if that's <coughs> if that's something that the trustees are interested in doing it can be added essentially I think you could add it as there's already a list of conditions in the proposed resolution it could just be added as the uh, you know a final uh, condition that that says you're incorporating that I think it would be important to have some phrase there that's like to the extent permitted by law or something to that effect because while we appreciate the the creativity and and what they've done here there there are certain elements of this that we wouldn't be able to enforce it's, it has to do with some back and forth process with the the neighbors in silver spring house we can enforce when it gets down to the code level obviously uh, and that's what this says so i think as long as it is captured in a way that says you know to, to the extent permitted by law you want to incorporate this statement i think that would be fine and i think everyone would understand the the limitations of of what that means okay thank you mm -hmm. um can i ask a couple questions um, before we open it up for new comments we can go ahead you went okay so we've heard from both sides and at this point I'd like to open it up uh, to the audience if there's anyone that would like to provide comments based on the new information this evening yes please come to the podium uh, state your name and address my name is Kim Shieldneck. I live at 8309. Apologize for the look. I just had some surgery, but oh, I just want to hope say everything this. went okay. Um, none of this really had to happen. If you guys would have just came to me and we would have sat with our neighbors, talked about this reasonably, understood your position, instead of bringing in tons of people that really had no relevance to the situation, we would have gladly worked with you. Who would have came up with this solution with all this, without this other nonsense? So, if sir, actually, you need to address. So the board. I, but yeah, thank you. I get it, but I wanted to look him in the eyes. I understand. Well. So that's just my point. We're reasonable people. We don't think that uh, Silver Spring House are bad folks. We go there. We like them. But my point is, none of this stuff needed to happen if they would have just sat down reasonably with us. That's okay. All I have to say. Thank you. I just want to comment that people of Petrola have been over the top nice and easy to work with. In their comments the last time, they were very complimentary of the Silver Spring House. So I'm, I'm, I just want to say yes. Petrola residents have been great. Ken, did you have something you want to say earlier? See if there's anyone else. First. Yeah. Anybody else wants to come to the podium this evening? Ken? Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Please. <coughs> Thank you. Tim Jester, 8363 Hamiltonian. So one of the problems with this corner of Kemper and Snyder is it's between two townships, Sycamore on one side, Sims on the other. Right. I was at the Sycamore Township meeting on Monday and they just approved 500 seat stadium at the high school. That project is going forward thousand seat stadium to the junior high and now I don't know what the number of parking spots is now 100 200 How many? anybody have a real number 91. No. okay 91 so that's in the roughly another hundred so that's 1600 parking space spaces on projects that are gonna be in this corner there's you're just setting it up for accidents with school buses and kids and I know you say you can't vote because of traffic but the concern that I have as the resident there is all the traffic converging on that corner. And I know you didn't vote the 500 seat stadium in because that's not your township. But, and then of course the uh, other property right down the hill that just got rezoned that was residential. And also the other thing, when I went to Sycamore they said, we've also never overturned what the BZA and the Hamilton County Planning Commission, and that's all we ask from you. You have a master plan and, and zoning. 
Please follow it. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Ken, did okay. you have some comments? I had a couple questions to see if in the agreement between the two sides, the following issues were addressed or whether we need to put restrictions in this uh, resolution. Number one has to do with outdoor music in the parking lots and so on. That was an issue that was brought up by the residents in the surrounding area. Uh, my understanding is it's not addressed. Um, my clients have testified that in 35 years you've done it less times than on my hand. So it's just, from our perspective, it's not an issue. We don't intend okay. to. It's never been a problem. We're as neighborly as we can be, and we'll work with them. But we've never done it. And when you did do it, it stopped at 10 p.m.? Yes. Is that right? Actually, it's one time in the park. One time in the park. The rest of it's indoor music. Do you have live music inside? No. I, so I said exterior. I didn't say interior. Exterior, said, done, you've done it one time on your 20th, an 20th anniversary, so it was 15 years ago. So okay. it's, it's from our perspective, it's a non-issue. It did not, to my understanding, come up in the negotiations. Okay. Secondly, uh, noise, dumpster noise and things like that in off hours? That's a great question. I actually talked to my clients about that. Of all the things that came up in the testimony, the one that I felt strongly about it, because I've heard dumpsters at 2 in the morning, and they're loud. And you all have committed to address that. So we that did not come up in negotiations, but we had already intended to address that ourselves as a good okay. neighbor. For, um, for the benefit of the residents in that area, if there's a dumpster before six before seven a.m., call the township police. Okay, because that violates our noise ordinance. Yeah, like I say, I, I took okay. it very seriously. And so we can keep that out of, of your bailiwick sure. if the residents are aware that they can complain. Sure. Uh, Third, uh, there was a big concern about runaway cars and so on. If you take out the five-foot concrete wall with the six-foot wall on top of it, and now you put in this three-foot berm with an eight-foot fence, you're still 11 feet, but it doesn't necessarily solve a runaway car problem. Has that been addressed by both parties to your satisfaction? It did come up in the negotiations as an issue. Okay. Uh, my clients are not I would say willing to put in the concrete barrier and I think Mr. Burke some of his clients were conflicted that it doesn't look as good as the berm okay uh, I don't know that but we weren't willing and to do first, it from first my perspective there's was was it addressed and if it you're came saying up, it, it came was up and it was not I'm, I'm satisfied okay um, <coughs> the fourth one really has to do with is it Silver Spring House's policy to police their property for trash broken bottles and so on that are thrown over the wall you either from on, our on either on the east or on the north from our property onto adjoining property not just police our own parking lot but look to well. see that people aren't throwing trash over the fence yeah but if you have a lot of kids on the other side of that fence and so on and so forth so even though it's landscaped and so on i would like to see silver spring house police their own property well not, no i not not a daily basis but you know periodically no, first of all, as to our property, we do, and they keep it regularly clean. It's immaculate. When I've on been the there. side of the on, on fence. Everything that would be a, a, something we own. And I would think that if somebody threw something over the fence, uh, it, it still would be, have a hard time getting on the east side over to Mr. Rademacher's property. And on the north side, through the Arbor Vitae, that fence is still 25 feet from the property line? 20 feet? Uh, yeah, right. So, but I don't have any, well, I mean, do you all have any problem occasionally going over and seeing if that becomes an issue? If it becomes an issue, we'll be glad to address it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Or if it becomes an issue. I sure, I mean, just let us know. Yeah. yeah, even if you let us know, we can. Somebody did bring that up, there were bottles. Yes, there was one person that came and testified at the end of the last meeting mm -hmm. that basically said he had small kids and there were broken bottles and things thrown over the fence, okay? And it may not have been on their property, because no, no, of the existing foot. Like I say, it would have to go over the 11 foot yes, fence and then through the Arbor Vitae's to get to the adjoining property. In the case of Mr. Rademacher's property, you have to travel 60 feet 
in order to do that. But I think it's reasonable that we be good neighbors and check that out. Absolutely. Okay. okay. I'm not going to try and put the restriction. I, I just want the cognizance. Okay. Sure. Just to explain where that particular concern. W would you mind speaking in the microphone, Ms. Burt? Thank you. Sorry, it came from another Padrillo resident, <coughs> but it's property that backs onto the extended parking area that Silver Springs uses in the office complex okay. next right. door. Uh, and okay. while but that's, that's not their property, it, 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 is, it is their property? Or does it belong to the Lucky Three building? I can address that if you like. Please. Yeah. So my understanding is that to the east of this property along Kemper Road are the three yes. office condominiums. That is owned by, actually, I guess the owners individually of those office condominiums, and then there's common areas for the condominiums. As a condition of their zoning, they needed our access on East Kemper shared, and so they agreed to la allow us in the evenings after 6 p.m., to use their parking lot. So our parking lot expands by 65 spaces at night. 51. And on weekends, maybe. 51, isn't it? And so we do have, Mr. Burke is correct, we do have our patrons parking over there in the evenings, and I think it's appropriate for you all to keep an eye on that. And because there will be no fence over there, it will be pretty easy to keep an eye on that because you don't have to go to the other side of the fence. You could just look, see if people are trashing the area. And if you all become aware of that, Again, we want to be great neighbors, not good neighbors. These are great operators, and we would be glad to address it. So, Joe or Joe, give out your number to these folks tonight, or just call the restaurant number. And, you know, we want to be accountable to you to do that. And if you need to get the township involved and make us accountable, we will, but I don't think you will. And we want to be good neighbors. And I think what okay. you're suggesting, even as to property we don't own, we have rights to park there, and they should police that, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I'm satisfied. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. I saw some hands raised before. I d if you want to please come to the podium to state your name and address. Dave Vamaka, 8327 mm -hmm. Petrillo Lane. Um, yeah, I was thinking about, you know, I, I brought up about the concrete wall and I was suggesting a low concrete wall, 30 inches, 36 just to stop a car. They kind of said no. So in the last few days, I was thinking, well, um, would you consider a, what they call, you know, those rails and the posts in the ground, the wood posts in the ground? The ballards or? Guard rail, I guess. Mm. Besides just, just the fence, I like maybe a guard rail too. Uh, so I was just thinking about that and, you know, that pretty easy thing to put in and maybe it take the place of a concrete wall and stuff so it's, it's just a thought I was, I was thinking okay any other speakers Cheryl Sprague 8316 Cortola Lane um, I just had one question. One of the things that I brought up was um, having a, a neighborhood committee to kind of um, work with the ongoing construction of all this to kind of keep keep informed as to what's going on so that they're updated. I don't know if it could be uh, weekly or, you know, um, just to let them know if, if all this takes place and there's construction and a lot of things going on to let them know and keep in contact with them. I wonder if there was any discussion about that. Any kind of a neighborhood committee that would, you know, I know that you guys have been involved in it all along. Would there be an, an opportunity for the neighborhood to have some kind of updated information mm -hmm. to keep them in the loop, um, working either, you know, with the ongoing, because it's, it's gonna, when you get in there and you got heavy equipment pulling out trees and you have you know you're going to have a lot of noise and, and you know I'm, i've been around construction sites enough to know that, you know it's not a quiet thing mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know if they're digging holes for the water and you know putting in fences and things like that i just i just thought it would be a good idea to have a neighborhood community just to keep, keep informed so i didn't know if there was any discussion more about that do you have an yeah. email that you could let one of the residents know could there be a resident that 
would step up and give an email and then if, if there's going to be major construction you could just shoot out an email to them saying so. construction June 2nd so I know the the school eight lets us eight or eight yeah the school lets us know when there's going to be fireworks and all that that's stuff okay is that okay with you guys to keep in contact okay I think there's your committee. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, that's, you. that's outside of our bailiwick. That's something you guys have to set up. Yeah. Okay. But as a person who works in construction, it is helpful to communicate what's going on. I do get that. Um, he almost, I don't know if it's a, a weekly update or at least when, when things are coming, it would be helpful to give folks an update. Yes. Good comment. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, let's see. We picked up from last week with the pu with the uh, public hearing. Uh, we've heard from the applicant, the residents, the the audience. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm going to move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. All right. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Lease? Aye. Mr. Beck? Aye. Mr. Bryant? Aye. There is no old business, so we move into new business. I move approval of Resolution G2023-44, resolution approving a major revision to an existing EE planned resident district and zone change application received to change the zoning <laughs> from A residents to EE planned residents with subservient retail for the lots located at 8322 East Kemper Road and 11540 Snyder Road. And as we heard earlier this evening, um, as part of this resolution incorporating the joint statement um, as a reference. Second. Discussion. Brian, do you have anything else to add to the process? <coughs> I do not. No. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. I have it right here. Nobody else has it. I'm sorry. I just. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure um, that we know which version of of the of a resolution that you're voting on. Good point. Uh, you've you've moved to adopt it. Got a second. If yes. And you can have discussion. We. Um, he added number 11 at the very end. If you is that the one that's? That's the one I just put up. Yeah, so I, I just thought it may be helpful for the board. Yes. If, if, you, if you take a look, um, and you may want to actually take a minute <laughs> to look. Uh, but based on the information that was provided to us uh, earlier today related to some of the agreed upon terms, we have st staff has we've modified the the resolution and I think it would be helpful if everyone just took a second to look at it this incorporates the things about the eight foot fence the 33 and a half foot buffer the 69 you know uh, the things that we could pull out I think it would be helpful to note number 11 and this is at the request of, of the of the parties um, we did add language that says to the extent authorized by law, this approvals incor this approval incorporates the joint statement. Um, so, so that is in that that language is in the resolution. I just thought it would be helpful if if and for the public for the, for that matter that because this is uh, this is slightly different than the one that would have been on the agenda a week ago. It, it tried to incorporate these things. So and this is all based out of their discussion yep. on Tuesday. Is it Tuesday this when the only Tuesday? changes we made were based directly oh, on the joint statement and the plans that they provided to us today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. but I just thought everyone should have an opportunity to see it, make sure mm -hmm. that that's it accurately represents what um, what's before the board and, and and then the board can have whatever discussion and vote that you're ready to do. So this reflects the April 20th information. Yes, you'll you'll notice there are I'm sorry, there are a few places throughout here like like 
number nine, for example, uh, you know, this is where we've captured the new buffer yards, and it, right. it references, as shown on the plan submitted at the trustees' meeting on April 20th, 23, <coughs> 2023. Uh, same with number 10. Uh, I want to make sure that that says it's limited to 89 additional spaces. I want to make sure that that's accurate. Because I. A minute ago, I heard someone yeah. say. So that's an 89. That's an 89 net. net. Okay. Yes. I, I just. This is what is before the board. I just want to make sure everybody is uh, understands what's before the board and that it accurately represents what we're doing here. And if not, I think it would be helpful to add net on 10 because there's actually more than 89 spaces on the subject property, but then you're taking some spaces off the current. Mm -hmm. So it's 89 net new it's spaces. It's so it says additional. Change additional to net. I think that's okay. Okay. Well, as, as long as it's for the whole site, yes, that's fine. And this is really the zoning of the whole site. Right. Yeah, yeah, so it should, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was number one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> number one was one of the existing detailed, detailed landscaping plan. plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. One thing I do want to point out. Um, in our zoning code, we only allow for six foot fences. So number we had to add number four for the eight foot tall fence. There's your answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I knew that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you. So this no, I is think it was very acceptable. Gone. Acceptable. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Glad it worked was out. Was it seconded? Was seconded? It was seconded, correct? Yes. I okay. seconded. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Beck? Aye. Miss Lease? Aye. Mr. Bryant? Mm. Aye. We have no executive session. I move to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Mr. Beck? Aye. Mr. Bryant? Aye. Miss Lease? Aye. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. your working together yes. on this. Very uh, everybody gave a little bit, I think. Oh.